thunder, yay. Hey there, cousin here, and welcome back to Always Doing. It is September 1st. It is raining quite a bit, which wasn't in the forecast. There was even some thunder just now, and it is the beginning of Shorty September, and I am so excited for this. And I have decided to go a little bit above and beyond just Shorty September, where the idea, first of all, it's a readathon done by uh, Bert and Sean over at Pastory Time and Heather at Expat Soggy Expat Book Nerd. And the idea is to read a bunch of short books that fill the prompts that they give. But I saw Heidi over at My Reading Life and Britta Bowler recently do their own 30 books in 30 days. And this is the perfect opportunity, is it not? Short books, lots of motivation. So I think. I'm gonna make a run at it. So instead of wrap-ups this month, I'm going to be doing vlogs like this that are mostly me talking to the camera and telling you about the books as I read them. If you would like to follow along with my reading in real time, follow me on Goodreads, you can follow me on Twitter, and you can get more updates that way. <laughs> it's the thunder, I'm not used to it. It's in the morning too, it's odd. So, because this is beginning, instead of a spread, I this is a bit more ambitious than something that can just use a spread. So I'm doing something a little bit different. So here we have my desk. The pothos, which is usually behind me, is hanging out here because there's so little light and I want to make sure that some of these new leaves get nice variegation on them. So we have, oh it helps if I'm prepared, the shorty September prompts. And I am, at first I'm going to see just what I read. There's gonna be stuff that happens to fit a beautiful book cover. Translated, uh, one of my books that I'm starting with is gonna be that comfort read. Like some things are gonna be read, some things will fall pretty easily, and then afterward I'll worry about filling in holes. And in lieu of a spread, I thought I would do a calendar, and so I went through some printable things I had, and like there's this, but I don't know, that's pretty boring, right? But then I found a website that has pretty calendars and their Monday start which is more common in Japan and it's my favorite favorite to have the Monday start so and we have some the national holidays coming up so I found that and I was like okay maybe I'll use this but then I found this September is the month of moon viewing so we have the cats we have the moon and that's just about perfect it does have the system of lucky and unlucky days that I don't care about on here but that's all right we forgive because of cats. So I think I'm going to use this to keep track of. Like when I finish a book, I'll write it on for that day um, and just see how the month goes. I'm also thinking of using this, which is designed as a family calendar. So this is everybody's schedule and then you put names here. So you can keep track of, you know, like what everyone's doing on separate days. But I might use this to keep track of all the books that I have in progress, like what I started when, when I finished it try and keep my number of books simultaneous them simultaneously reading down to a minimum so this is how I think I'm going to be doing my tracking for this month I do have a couple of books on the go already one is the book of translations um by Teddy Lopez Mills I think the name is translated by Robin Myers and I started this for women in translation month and I only got through the first essay not because there's anything wrong with it just I wasn't in the right mood and I figured if I'm not very far into it, I can count it for Shorty September, one of the prompts is for a translated book, so perfect. The other book I have on the go right now is my first book to prize book. I have three to read, it's not like I have to read all six, it's gonna be okay, but it's one of the longer ones, so it's gonna be just kind of get through it. So obviously that won't count for Shorty September, but it will count towards the 30 books in 30 days. Other than that, so to pick, oh I forgot to show you my cards. To pick what I'm going to read next, obviously I can go through my physical shelves, that's a lot of fun, but I also have a lot of ebooks that I want to keep at top of mind, so I ended up writing them on cards and I color coded. So the purple is for romance, this kind of grayish is for nonfiction, and anything with that orange at the top is under 100 pages, just in case I get stuck or fall behind in a spot. And they're here with the page information. Sometimes they have what number they are in a series or who recommended it to me. This is Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater, recommended to me by Kara. Uh, and Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers is a reread for me. 
this is where I want to start because the book of explanations is non-fiction and the book two prize I'm reading non-fiction so I want something fun and it's reread it should go fast so this is my goal for today September 1st and then I think I'm going to dig into half a soul and we're going to take things as they come from there obviously I have a lot of options between this and my bookcase so let's get into it September 2nd, I just finished filming a video where I rant about a bunch of books that I DNF'd, so you can look forward to that in a few days. But last night, on the 1st, I finished my reread of Psalm for the Wild Bill by Becky Chambers. This is Hope Punk, I think is the way that people describe it. It's a science fictional world that's a bit utopic in that, well, what happens is all the machines gained sentience and they were like, we're not really been working for you humans and they all went off into the wilderness and humans promised that they would never make robots work for them again and things evolved and changed and now a tea monk named Dex uh, meets a robot moss cap and it is the first time the two species have come in contact in like hundreds of years and stuff happens there's a lot of talk about what do humans want? Like that's what Moss Cap wants to know. What do humans want? And Dex is like, I am a singular human. I, I can, there's no way I can possibly tell you. But because the society is so evolved and is utopic in many different ways, what keeps humans going even when all their basic needs are met and even a couple more layers of Maslow's hierarchy of needs are met? How do you get out of bed every day? What keeps you going? And that's what they talk about in here. Being the second time through, what I liked is that I was able to concentrate a bit more on the gods that exist in this world and how they fit into things and to enjoy the conversations. Just it's it was a great book to reread and I'm actually I started last night the second book of the series, Prayer for the Crown Shy, and I only got a few pages in before I conked out, but I liked that it just flowed. It was really easy to go from one book to the other one. It has the exact same feel. It's only a week after the first book takes place. And I know this book isn't quite as loved. I mean, if you look on Goodreads, it's still over four stars with a zillion reviews. But uh, Sarah over Hardcover Hearts read it and she wasn't as keen on it as the first one. Um, and we had very similar thoughts about the first one. So we will see what happens there. So I'm reading that. And today the big deal is, well, getting more in my book two prize book. I'm trying to read a hundred pages a day in that before I read anything else for fun. So it's just going through it. Today's not so bad because I have a lot more free time than I originally thought I would on a Friday. So we're going to take advantage of that. And yeah. And so, oh, the other thing I wanted to say is that I have finally figured out how I'm going to use this vlog. I mean, I always thought I'm going to use it for short reviews. So what I'm going to do is hopefully put one of these up every week and it will be short looks at what I'm reading. And then in October, I think I'm going to go back and review the books that deserve reviews that I want to review. I might group them by genre, do different things to get a little bit more in depth into the books that deserve to be in depth. I just know that if I'm reading 30 books in 30 days, I will not be able to do my usual wrap up style, which is five books in like 20 to 25 minutes. And that's, it's a lot of prep. It's a lot of thought when I want to be concentrating on the reading. So that's why we're going with the vlogs and we'll see how all of this goes <laughs> and keep on going on. I have been working on this page of the chart for so long and I am so sick of it, but I am so close. I just have to finish up this bit here and then fill in this square and a bit here. And I will be done with this page, which means I can move the entire thing over and start working on this page, which will have different colors. It's gonna have a sparkler in it here. You can see some of the sparks coming off. In Japan, you hold the sparkler with the sparkle part down, the fireworks down, I'm, but yeah, I just want mm, just a little bit more. I'm so sick of this page. September 3rd, and I did not finish a book yesterday which was not in the plan. I was hoping that I would be able to at least stay on pace reading a book a day, but I did read a really big chunk of my book two prize book. So this morning I hunkered down and I finished it off. It was, I can see why it made the finals, but it wasn't a me book. So I'll just leave it at that. You can look forward to those vlogs coming up in the very beginning of October. 
But yes, so I was very happy to have that done and I'm not picking up another booktube prize book until today's Saturday, until Monday at the earliest. So I picked up the second Becky Chambers book, A Prayer for the Crown Shy. A little over halfway through, it's okay. It's not as entrancing as the first one, but it's okay. We'll see what I think once I get through it. And after that, I'm going to go completely by mood, but what's calling out to me right now is the Jackie Lau. It's, um, I say it like there's only one. I have a whole bunch of them, but there is a prequel to her Baldwin Village series that's on the short side. So I was thinking how nice it would be to be a book ahead and to make a nice chip into things. So I might do that next. We'll see. The morning of September 4th in weird lighting because I have my light right there because I am getting ready to stitch, but, and Otani's pitching. I had to wait until his half inning was over and now three angels are up to bat and yeah, Fletcher just, yep, got a hit. Good for him. <clears throat> this is where my brain's at right now, a little scattered. But I finished A Prayer for the Crown Shy last night and while I like it, it is definitely not as good as the first book, mostly because there's no plot. I think it would have been possible to make the through line a little bit stronger and when you lose the plot like that all of the philosophy stuff all these conversations are just kind of sticking out there and they don't do well being that exposed they need some cover they need the plot they need other things going on in order to make them feel like in the first book a little bit more natural a little bit more part of the book not the entire book that being said I really like all the queer elements in this I like how they're like we learn more about this utopic world i don't quite get all of it i don't see how you can have a currency like system without it turning into currency somehow and moss cap was also n not quite understanding why this is happening which makes me think that chambers is she knows that that's a fault like you didn't really need currency in this world if, especially for making it utopic like how else are you supposed to get away from capitalism if people are keeping track of that kind of thing in, in the way it's described so that was um hmm um but i still like the experience and the ending is not satisfying because it does that thing where it could end here like this could be the last book and you can it's not satisfying but you can see it at the same time there is an opening for books in the future and so what i think may happen i think chambers may have written all she has to write right now especially with all the philosophy stuff that's been going through these two books. And I think that she may come back to this in five years, 10 years, 20 years, and add a few more adventures when she has more to say. I'm not sure she has a lot more to say right now. If she does, it's great. I will definitely read it. But yeah, the mood though, the vibes, that's all the same. Like all that. But um, yeah, not quite as strong as the first. So three stars, all three books that I've read so far, three, four, no, three are three stars. <laughs> Hoping for better, I just started uh, One Bed for Christmas by Jackie Lau, and it's definitely upbeat. We'll see how it goes from here, and I think I'm going to cut off the vlog here because um, I need to edit it and get it up tonight. So if you have any thoughts, if you've read any of these, want to read any of these, want to say hi, it's all good. Let's gab down in the comments below. My arm is getting so tired. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!